On September 13, 2013, Cavers, Rick Hunter, and Stephen Tucker discovered hominin fossils in the Dean Nelady Chamber of South Africa's Rising Star Cave system. They returned on September 24 to take photographs, which they showed to South African paleoanthropologists Pedro Boshoff and Lee Berger. Berger organized an excavation team, including Hunter and Tucker, known as the Underground Astronauts. The Dean Nelady chamber is about 80 meters from the main cave entrance, accessible via a 12-meter vertical drop. The main passage leading to the chamber narrows to around a foot at its narrowest point. The excavation yielded over 1,550 bone fragments from at least 15 individuals, including 9 immature and 6 adult individuals. These fossils included various anatomical elements such as parts of the skull, jaw, ribs, teeth, limbs, and inner ear bones. Some elements were articulated or nearly articulated including a nearly complete skull with a jaw bone and nearly complete hand and feet. This collection represents a diverse range of individuals of both sexes and various age groups making it the most extensive assemblage of associated fossil hominins found in Africa. The holotype specimen DH1 includes a partial male calaveria and a partial maxilla and a nearly complete jawbone. In 2015, Berger and colleagues officially named this new species as Homo neledi, with neledi meaning star in the Soto language, referring to the star cave where the remains were found. In 2017, additional hominin remains, including two adults and a child, were reported in the Lesedi chamber of the same cave by John Hawks and colleagues, expanding our understanding of this ancient hominin population. Homo naledi displays a combination of characteristics resembling both contemporary Homo species and ancestral Australopithecus, indicating a form of mosaic evolution. Notably, they had a small cranial capacity ranging from 465 to 610 cubic centimeters, in stark contrast to modern humans, with capacities of more than 1200 cc. On average, Homo naledi individuals stood at about 4 feet 9 inches tall and weighed around 39.7 kg, resulting in a low encephalization coefficient of 4.5. Despite their small brains, their brain anatomy appeared similar to contemporary Homo, suggesting potential cognitive complexity. Interestingly, Homo naledi's physical characteristics and brain size challenge the previous assumption that a larger brain size necessarily confers an evolutionary advantage. Furthermore, their unique anatomical features significantly expand the known range of variation within the Homo genus. In terms of locomotion, Homo naledi exhibited human-like long-distance travel capabilities and a bipedal stride and gait. However, they displayed a greater degree of arboreality compared to other Homo species, suggesting better adaptation for climbing and suspensory behavior in trees rather than endurance running. Analysis of their tooth anatomy indicates a diet that included gritty foods covered in particulates like dust or dirt. The phylogenetic position of Homo naledi is a topic of ongoing debate in paleoanthropology. Hawks and Lee Berger have mentioned three different scenarios. Pliocene age scenario, early Pleistocene age scenario, and late Pleistocene age scenario. One idea is that naledi fossils have originated from late Pliocene period roughly before 3 million years ago. Homo naledi's anatomical features place it within the Homo family tree. An earlier date for the fossil suggests that key branching points in this family tree occurred earlier. Homo naledi shares distinctive traits with Homo erectus, implying a closer relationship between these two species than either has with Homo habilis. This raises the possibility that Homo hibalis may have descended from a point on the family tree predating the common ancestor of Homo naledi and Homo erectus. 
Homonelides lake of advanced features found in other Homo species suggests that its lineage existed before the appearance of Homo erectus around 1.8 million years ago. After about 2.1 million years ago, there is clear evidence of various Homo species coexisting in different regions. However, before this time, we have only fragmentary Homo specimens, making it challenging to assign them specific species. The prevailing idea is that Homo likely originated after 3 million years ago as the environment became drier. Early Homo adapted to a more selective diet including meat and began using stone tools. These Homo species eventually spread across Eastern and Southern Africa with different body sizes and brain sizes, all larger than Australopiths. Later, Homo erectus ventured beyond Africa into Eurasia. If Nelady fossils are indeed from early Pleistocene, this aligns with existing idea that Homo Nelady might have been one of several early Homo species in Africa. Its unique characteristic leave open the possibility that Homo Nelady could be an ancestor or sister species of Homo erectus, coexisting alongside it in southern Africa, similar to how Homo habilis and Homo erectus coexisted in other regions. If the Nelari fossils are relatively young, possibly less than a million years old, it doesn't change their phylogenetic position with regard to other species. If Nelari fossils are from the late Pleistocene, it means that human species existed in Africa with competition from other hominin forms. Homo Nelari's dental features suggest a generalist type. They show abilities to make more complex tools and navigate landscapes similar to advanced Homo species. Furthermore, if Homo nelady existed in late Pleistocene, it raises the possibility that archaeological finds attributed to archaic Homo sapiens may actually be the work of Homo nelady. Distinguishing their contribution to archaeological assemblages may be challenging without direct associations between hominin remains and artifacts. Complex behaviors such as funerary caching, creating engravings on cave walls and using fire have been observed in Homo nelady, challenging traditional notions of human evolution and cognitive abilities. These behaviors were traditionally believed to be exclusive to Homo sapiens. Throughout history, humans have honored their deceased through various burial practices including digging pits and placing bodies inside. Burial methods have cultural significance and can vary widely. Determining whether ancient remains were part of a deliberate burial can be challenging due to changes in burial sites over time and cultural variations. One of the earliest examples of an ancient burial includes a nearly 80,000 year old child's partial skeleton intentionally buried in a pit in Kenya. The question of whether Homo nelari engaged in deliberate burial, which involves deliberately placing bodies or body parts in an inaccessible location, has sparked debate. While it is challenging to explain why at least 15 individuals of Homo nelari would repeatedly venture deep into a cave system and die there, proponents of funerary caching argue that this behavior could reflect a deliberate practice. Three important conditions have been laid down for supporting the funerary behavior. Presence of artificial lights, possibility of fluvial transport, and articulation of skeletons. Scientists are searching for evidence of artificial lights such as charcoal, fragments, or torch residues in the cave. Light would have been crucial for Homo nelady to navigate the cave system. Researchers claim that mortuary and engraving activities in Rising Star Cave involved strategic use of fire for illumination. The Rising Star Cave system is complex with interlinked passages and chambers offering multiple potential routes to the Denelady chamber. The cave contains vertical fissures with distinct sedimentary fills, which may have acted as alternative routes to the Denelady chamber. Characteristics of the cave system and analysis of cave sediments indicate that it's highly unlikely for bones to have spontaneously flowed into the Denelady chamber. The position of parts such as limb elements and hand indicated 
they are articulated body parts. However, this does not exclude the role of natural processes like mummification which could explain the articulation of these remains. These evidences more or less support that deliberate mortuary and funerary practices make one of the earliest examples of such behaviors in hominids. The relationships between Homo nilari and other Homo populations in terms of their mortuary and funerary behaviors are unclear. There are three possible explanations. Homo nilari's behaviors are the result of polar evolution independent of human lineage. These behaviors date back to early Pleistocene or even Pliocene hominins and then diverged between Homo nilari and Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens or Homo nilari borrowed these behaviors as cultural practices from each other due to sympathy. The cave environment likely induced strong emotional reactions and bonding among Homo nilari community members. The repetition of these behaviors over time indicated valued social and cultural traditions implying a capacity for meaning making similar to other Homo populations of the same period. This emotional awareness allowed them to share beliefs and take intentional actions together, such as deliberate burials. Engravings in the same area suggest shared remembrance or attention to these locations. Similar demonstrations of emotional self-awareness in other hominins like Neanderthals through their use of caves and stone tools challenge the notion that only modern humans possess such creative abilities. Small-brained hominins played key roles in human evolution, such as developing stone tools and expanding out of Africa. The use of fire might also have emerged with similar brained hominins. Homo nilari's religio-autistic behavior challenges the notion that Increased brain size alone drives complex cultural actions. Instead, it implies that a cultural and empathetic niche involving complex social relationships played a significant role in the development of these behaviors.